Hi everyone, I'm Luis, and today I'm going to be presenting to you my research that is entitled How are pollination networks affected by an invasive plant? A case study with Carpobratus acinus farmis and bees. So I'm a graduate student here in ecology at UFSCI in Florianópolis, south of Brazil, and the advisor for this research was Dr. Michele de Sá Deschamps. This research was funded by Uniedu. So, the process of invasion by exotic species uh, is characterized by trespassing some stages and some barriers so we can uh, evaluate a species as an invasive species. When it starts to disperse and access other environments, it's when we are going to call this exotic species an invasive species. These invasive species can cause some changes in the ecosystems or the areas they are accessing. Uh, these changes can be uh, of abiotic factors, such as light or humidity or soil composition, or biotic ones, such as genetics, species, or interactions. There are, that are what we are going to look at. And here we have pinus and carpobratus. There were some species in some invasive areas that already were seeing some alterations that they cause in the environment. So my target species is Carpobratus acinaciformis. Uh, this species is native from South Africa, where it's present in coastal dunes, and it has a lot of abundant resources for pollinators, such as bees and beetles, and it can have easy access to degradate, degradate environments. So it's a species that is invasive in the Mediterranean, uh, Australia, the west coast of the United States, and also here at the east coast of Brazil. So for this research, we chose to look at networks. And networks are a way of accessing complicated models, more complex models, so we can have a better understanding of this of the total picture, of the bigger picture. So looking for ecological interactions between a lot of individuals or a lot of populations, networks are a very good way to access it. They have a lot of concepts of the network in total or for the knots or degrees that are these little dots that can represent individuals or populations and interactions or amount of interactions that can be represented by these strings and the size of these strings. So also for biological invasions, we can have a greater access and understanding of how a population or an individual is affecting the environment it, uh, where it is and that it's invading. So networks are a very good way to understand this subject. My main objective with this research was to evaluate the, some effects of the exotic invasive Carpobratus in networks of bees and native plants here in frontal zones in the east coast of the Santa Catarina Island uh, at Brazil. My main hypothesis is that by uh, this plant being very abundant in providing a lot of food resources in these areas where it invades, it will uh, generate some influence on these networks and how the species that were there before interact, interact with themselves. So my area of study is the Parque Natural Municipal das Dunas da Lagoa da Conceição, an area created in 1975 and further became a conservation unity here at Brazil. So the climate is temperate and my sampling was con were concentrated in frontal dunes, that is the area where Carpobatos uh, invades here at the park. And the vegetation of these areas are most constituted of hestinga, with shrubs, subshrubs, and small weeds. My two areas were sampled between, uh, with uh, a distance between then of 1.2 kilometers 
for trying to exclude, to distance the populations and the networks between themselves. So my methodology was with, in each area, we have some uh, 500 meters and the sampling was done once a day in between October and January. To, in, so between October and January of 2021 and 2022, with one day uh, for each month for each of the areas, totalizing around 25 hours, but the sampling was done by two persons, so the total sampling effort for each area, each network was around 50 hours of sampling. The species identification will be done by specialists in the area and taxonomists, so now for the data we have, we just separated the species of plants and bees in morphotypes. So to analyze this data, we separated in this species in morphotypes, as we as I was saying. So for each of the area, I evaluated the connectance, the nesting, and the modularity, uh, as I explained before, and. We ran some new models because the areas didn't have any replicates. So to see if the results we found were significant and we can could make the comparison between the two networks. So here are some of the results we found. First, this matrix was just to represent where the abundance and interactions were in the invaded area, and we can see that mostly of the dots stay in the borders, and there are just a few dots in the middle and dispersed through the matrix. And when we look at the area without invasive species, the dots were not so centered in the board and were more dispersed through all the matrix, representing some less nesting and more modularity in the network. Here we can see the abundance and proportionality of uh, the individuals frequenting and interacting between them in the area invaded being Carpobrotus and Apis that is also an invasive species here in Brazil being the most abundant species in the network and in the area without Carpobrotus, Epis also has a big role, but is not the most abundant species, losing space for species one. And the plants has not, uh, any of the plant species has a big dominance, and interactions are much more dispersed in the network. So the values we found were that the nesting was bigger for the invaded area, and the connectance and modularity were lower. So nesting being few species with a lot of interactions, such as Apis and Carpobrotus, so it made sense, it was what we were looking for to found in the field. And the connectance and modularity being bigger in the area without the invasive species represent that the networks and the interactions are more dispersed and more specialized. It was also very, what was also very great to see. So here are the results from the new models, representing that all the results we found were very significant and different from what was ex expected from the networks. Also, we recorded this bee species and native plants and plant pollinators interactions that were not recorded before. It's very important for understanding and, and preserving this biodiversity. And we found and could offer that Carpobrotus being present in these interactions networks, it can alter and make the network more nested and less with less connectance and modularity compared to areas where it is where Carpobrotus is absent. Here are some of my bibliography. And I thank you guys for your time and thank you guys for listening to me. Thanks.